Three mere mortals discover their ability to create entire universes with their minds alone. Upon discovering their abilities, these three, mm, gods if you will, join forces to create the Dark and Stormy Nights, a supercharged team of creatives with the aim of helping artists and writers around the world while combating the forces of boredom and mundanity. They are the Dark and Stormy Nights. <laughs> Welcome back to the Dark and Stormy Nights, and I am definitely not drunk enough for this episode. <laughs> um, uh, I'm Loki. I'm here with Odin. Say hi, Odin. Hi, Odin. And say hi, Tyr. Hello. All right, so I guess, uh, and this is fitting because uh, <clears throat> we were trying to write this episode, and we really couldn't. <laughs> so I guess it's a good a time as any to talk about writer's block. Right. Um, so I apologize because this is... So not scripted. <laughs> um, I had no idea what to do, and I don't know. Um, I, I, I have a lot of things, a lot of methods I do to break writer's block. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of that involves writing a bunch of crap that is useless that I end up throwing out eventually, and eventually I finally come across something good that I've written. Um, what do you guys do? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's fine. I think that um, most often when I end up in a situation where writer's block has become an issue, I kind of, it, it depends. I, I'm usually writing multiple books at once because I have a little bit of a lack of focus issue. So sometimes one book just stops flowing, but another one might be able to be picked up, you know? So, you know, it just kind of depends on where my creativity is. And if my creativity is completely dead, then I start at the beginning. And I go back through the beginning of the book and I start editing. And, you know, sometimes something will spark there where I'm like, ooh, I could have gone this way with this. Or, you know, I start, like, tweaking things that way. Um, and to be honest, like, sometimes I will just give it all, like, if it's really going nowhere, I'll give it all up. And I will listen to those, like, white noise things that they have, like, on YouTube and, like, you know, Prime and all that stuff. Never use those guys? No? no. I just use uh, non-lyrical non, um, music, you know, like... Uh, you know, classical pieces or something, depending on the mood. Yeah, you know, I've never um, tried classical. Jazz, any any I sort mean, of yeah, instrumental. Sure inspiration comes from different places for different people. Uh, for me, sometimes it's just white noise to block everything else out to make a creative thought. Well, through. I listen to white noise when I go to bed, mm -hmm. so that's like the opposite of what I'm trying to do. Oh, God, Norwegian would, black metal is so much better than sleeping. <laughs> Now, I, or like ocean sounds or something, you know? Same thing, yeah. yeah. Long-time fans of the show, all five <laughs> episodes, will know that I, Odin, are very rarely at a loss for words. But that doesn't mean I don't run into this. Uh, however, I do think, as a side note, our problem with this episode is not a writer's block issue. It's discipline. Discipline? Yes, we all have a bit of ADHD, and we record this at the end of the week. So we're all a little mentally fatigued, if not physically so. Well, yeah, we've all worked all day... Well, all week and then all day today and then did show planning and then we come here and we try to put out the best piece of content we can. So, uh, it, it, as far as writer's block, when I come to it, it's because I've written myself into a corner or because I have a whole outline of maybe not a very super structured, fleshed out outline, but I know where the story's going. I have an idea where it's going to end, but I don't necessarily know all the points in between, but I do know the points I have to hit along the way. And sometimes in writing, there's stuff I need to do to get to the next point that I just don't enjoy writing about. But I feel I have to write in a linear fashion instead of like all over the place to get the flow going right. But if you're not in love with what you're writing, it's crap. It will yeah. come out right. So I get myself where I'm pigeonholed into like, I just have to muscle through this, but it's really the wrong approach. I just need to find a different way of attacking it. I kind of disagree, and I, I will be the first to admit that I'm a much more disorganized writer, but if I come to a point where I'm like, Dah, I can't get past this, but I know what's coming next, I'll skip to the next thing that interests me. If See, I I'm afraid that's that, all right then. See, well, you can connect the dots after. I write, I write an outline. I didn't used to. I used to try to just write you know, <clears throat> straight through or right. when I got inspired stuff, and I found I did not make much progress, so I started outlining. And I learned to do this. I used to have to write presentations for college and stuff like that. So 
uh, I started writing the way I wrote presentations. I was much more successful with it. However, there is one issue with the way I outline. So I'll create a broad outline and then I'll narrow my outline. I'll keep adding the pieces in between to connect all the dots. Mm -hmm. And I'll put more and more dots in until I develop a line eventually. However, when you discover a break in it somewhere where something doesn't work, it messes up a lot of that. Outline. Well, because you got to go back and rewrite everything that then you didn't have to shoehorn in. Right. So yeah, that's the. So issue. it doesn't feel shoehorned and come out of nowhere. And I don't like doing that. I like finding the natural progression. And sometimes I lose a lot of the outline Maybe and have to start Maybe you're outlining over. too much. I, I do feel that's the case. I, I, I yeah. I, I don't know. I find it, it produces a more realistic piece of material for me. But yeah, sometimes I but ruin a lot of But you're taking away my... some of the natural flow. I don't know, I, and not I just still that. Enjoy what I'm doing the with surprise, it. you know, because I, I I love. Oh, I already know how all my stories are going to end. So. I'm well, no, no, no. I get that, but right, like backwards. Like okay, I I have a a story which has a Mc... most people can't read backwards. It has a MacGuffin, <laughs> you know, the magical glowing football that you know gets passed around and everyone's chasing and the ultimate goal is realizing all what that fun the crap. Sh are you talking about MacGuffins? <laughs> The, you know, Doc like, McStuffins? It, it, it's it's the uh, thing, the whatever. Like in the MCU, it's, you know, the uh, Infinity Stones. Yes. You know, it, it's whatever thing that drives an entire story that everyone's fighting over. So I have one in my story, and I needed to change hands. So, you know, to me it was just me a quick aside or whatever. But then I realized smuggling it out of this town involved a character, involved a whole story... He had to have a background. He needed a name. As soon as I named him, he became interesting. It went layers deep. And the thing is, none of this... Whoa, you incepted? <laughs> but none of this actually took away from my story. It did nothing but enhance it. And I, all I had is a note that somebody moves it. Enhance. And if I over-outlined that, I wouldn't have been surprised by him. I had the whole guy just come out of nowhere and just give birth to a whole new details in my world. And I love that. I love being surprised by the own, the story itself unfolding. Well, I think that I still kind of get some of that with my outlining everything because what I'm trying to do is connect dots, right? So my dots are very far apart to begin with, and then I place dots in between until it all fills in, right? I don't know. Maybe I do that too, uh, but I don't think of it that way. So, like, yeah, I, I don't know that the, in the, my head it's that. The problem with it is, is I will create physical. sections where this dot doesn't lead to this dot. You know, and so, or not not logically anyways. So you, you need know. another series of dots between those two dots. Or I have to, it messes well, up to later dots and I have to redo it. So, yeah. Yeah, so, I guess I, I see it as like pathways, like a choose your own adventure that slowly stops being a choose your own adventure and just becomes the book you guys read. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a series of pathways. So I guess in your in your mind it's this giant segmented line, and to me it's just yeah, choices. I feel like you guys are filling in that outline a lot more than I am. I kind no, of no, this is all my with, head. I this isn't know, like intentional. I basically need to know a small little bit about my characters before I can create their story for oh my them. My God, I have a whole back history. Oh yeah, well, no, we went families. too far, but we're also no, no, no. I mean, before I can start a story, I need like a little piece of my characters and then I say okay this is the journey you're going on this is the situation I create the ultimate end game but I mean a lot of the in between kind of just has to naturally develop for me well I feel like if I have too many dots on the line like you're saying that I will lose some of the inspiration to figure it out along the way you know like that would it's too restrictive for me I, I do see how <clears throat> the um the pantser form of writing where you just no outline just goes straight through the and what? see where it goes. It's go, they they call it pantser writing. There's no outline. You I just feel write like you freely. Need some kind of outline. Um, I that, didn't know there was a word I, for it. I, I do see it as I, I do understand that that you might get a better surprise in your story than I get because although you don't I would suck know for where detective going. story. Uh, whereas, you know, I know where it's all going, so I have to have been creative <clears throat> enough to, to come up with the twist or, or whatever ahead of time. When I started writing it, I know that that twist is going to happen. Okay, but I, I feel like it's also, we should point out, that there's a difference in the type of story you're writing. Like, you write sure. these epic novels that, like, you've built worlds. And they're very intricate. MCU-like. Yes. Whereas <laughs> uh, I write MCU's a much more... kind of tiny compared to... <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> I write smaller, simpler, like, stories. Yeah, there's a world there but it's not like I've created entire like races. I pretty much right. work I've invented within technologies existing mo and worlds right. and aliens. Right. And, yeah. Whereas I work within mostly existing mythology and things like that. Well, it's not a matter of different or better. <clears throat> I, I, well, I can't. No, not at all. I mean, I, I, 
Oh. My favorite stories are, are very simple horror stories. I read horror and I write sci-fi. Well, what I was what I was trying to say is that while I can't speak for Loki, I kind of can't because I've known him for a long time. I've worked with him. I've written with him and had him write with me. And um, there's a lot of crap or get off the pot. And we need a little more confidence and discipline to just get it out there and do it. So some of our world building that goes to the nth degree that looks like an obsession that would shame Tolkien is because we've had a lot of time of stewing something before we've actually delivered it. Uh, and we've read Tolkien and seen the plot holes and well, yeah, that's the other thing. We crappy sit, devices. We sit on giants. And don't get me wrong. And, I love Tolkien. Right, right, right. But we we we're also come from a very analytical, pessimist, complicated age where, we dismantle where, everything. where realism is so important. And I've always felt it was so, but I mean, in this age especially. Well, you want to suspend, well, especially when you're dealing with something as fantastical as we are, you know, your world with magic, my world with high-tech and aliens and everything like that, you want to suspend as much disbelief as possible. So It's in, a little any, easier with aliens. Anywhere where you can have detail and stuff like that, that that suspends disbelief, later on when something wild and out there comes along, it's easier to accept Right. And everything else is so well explained. I think you just have to immerse your reader. Like, as long as you are writing in a fan... Like, honestly, I've read stories where I'm like, this is so out there. And then I've read other stories where technically the story is just as out there, but they've pulled me in so much that, you know, anything goes. Sure, you know? there's a bunch of like, ways, too, because, like, if I if I love the character, yeah, I will accept more weird crap in that all, world. All right, I got three well, things to say to that. as long as everything works cohesively... Sure. Okay, three things to say to that. Uh, yes, character sells Rawling. The world is weird, conflicting, whatever, but the character sells. Poorly assembled, yeah. But like, I believe it was Mark Twain who was talking about how um, his fiction has the burden of being believable where the news or reality doesn't. Sure, yeah, exactly. And, yeah, I mean, God, try and write what's going on in our world right now. Nobody would believe oh, it. Oh, yeah. No one would buy a Trump or whatever, not to be political. But, yeah, I mean, the whole, this whole whatever is, is in ridiculous. Recent, in recent years, all the fiction has geared towards post-apocalyptic shit because <laughs> that's where people see well, things that, it. And that's always ahead of the curve. Before everyone else is feeling it, you'll see it in sci-fi. Uh, where society right. is thought well, to be going. Well, it's your job as a writer to connect those dots and make right. something new. Well, it's not just that. It's it's your fears enhanced <laughs> and projected into the future. Enhanced. Well, yeah. I feel like that's authors kind of putting out a little bit of this ain't so far out there, you know? And the third thing that I wanted to make reference to is, is that um, when it comes to any system, okay, so like in your uh, sci-fi, or mine's sci-fantasy, um, you know, uh... Out, you, you have to know the physics to sell it. Yeah. At least enough as the middle of the road lay faith, uh, physicist student might know. Yes, Hawking's my homeboy. Well, it doesn't have to be that high. But, yeah, you have to have enough that you don't stop, you don't take someone out of the fiction when they question something that's going on. A general on. knowledge of, of theory and, and... Where in sci-fantasy, you have two routes to go. Either don't explain anything and just go... You know, it's magic. Or explain it and stay consistent to the rules. Never conflict your own rules. Well, that's why we, we literally wrote an entire system oh, yes. that is cohesive so all of this works. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there will be a company game system to, to anybody interested. near a decade to put this all together. Right, but I mean, I think the point is that, like, like, I was a huge Star Trek nerd growing up, and the next generation, like, was my thing. And, like... A lot of the technology that was involved there was based on hypothesis and things that scientists... And look, some were, of it's coming true. Right. I mean, so, I mean, a lot of it was based on things that they were really working on. Oh, yeah. that they were predicting were coming. Um, yeah, they interviewed uh, NASA say, people and engineers. Yeah. I mean, and it, I loved Star Trek, and I mean, that was quite the fantasy world in itself. All that peaceful, everybody gets along kind of crap, but... Um, uh, and now that's, you know, every bit as much fiction as the fantasy worlds with magic and shit flying. But, yeah, we um, just can't, uh, we don't currently have a Geiger meter on our cell phone or medical scanning, but we can do damn near everything else. Mm-hmm. I want one of the little Tom's pins. 
Anyway. Uh, um, Bluetooth, yeah, Universal Bluetooth. Translator, like uh, the Bebblefish. No, I don't want Bluetooth tracking me. Um, <laughs> oh, um, but, like, the fantasy stuff, I agree completely. Like, as long as you're writing your rules and you're obeying your rules, I mean... Yeah, know what they are. Yes, and then follow them. Because that's what pulls me out of a story, is the second that something isn't working with something that was set before. You know, like, it's those discrepancies. Right, if you have a magic spell, what does it do? You right. know? But it always does that then. But I was talking you know? to Loki about this, is that if you get two out of three things right, you can carry a book. So, we're, you know, like, if you're not great with the conversation or you're, you're inconsistent in your rules or something, sell the character, sell the world. Well, that's what I'm if you, As long as I'm enraptured, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with it. Harry Potter, I love the characters. The characters are great. The magic I wasn't impressed with the because world's she was interesting, inconsistent. Though. You know, she had, very, she had a bunch of inconsistencies. But, yes, the world was great. The characters were great. I'm in. You know, okay, fine. Yeah, not to mention, I forgave the rest. It's also a fantasy. Uh, it's the very much the Lion Witch in the Wardrobe, where you get sucked into a whole other universe. You imagine yourself like, what if I grew up and went to Hogwarts? Was I the only one who did not like Lion Witch in the Wardrobe? Oh, I'm not. No, no, I'm not saying the story's great. I mean, it was a Jesus allegory, so I'm out. I'm already out. But uh, in talking beavers and chainmail, I, I could deal without. I don't but, know. That part seems fun. But <laughs> but a, but a magical portal ex machina with no explanation that just exists in your house. That at any point you can walk into a cupboard and go somewhere else and have an adventure and be part of a whole other life. I can. Life. It's called psilocybin. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Don't recommend. Or MDMA. For legal Either one's fine. For legal reasons. We I'll, do not I'll, recommend any of these things. I'll be petting your fur coat. So. But <laughs> Touch a fuzzy wall. That's mm. not a standard. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a standard. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> wow! They barge into the wardrobe. I'm all there. No, 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 no. The but, but I'm saying ah. it's or, or like Shazam. A little boy says a magic word, gets it be all powerful. It, it, any of these things that just can immediately take you in a whole different life that you can imagine yourself in, that will sell. That will that. It doesn't matter how ridiculous of a trope it is. Like it, it, Shazam is a silly, silly concept. It looks like a hilarious movie. Okay. But so we, it's, but we were it, talking about writer's fantasy. block, right? So we, uh, of course, have derailed a little bit. But uh, what are you telling me here? How does this relate back to writer's block, I guess, now? Just go with it? Well, no. yeah, in a sense. Like, uh, one, one, one way the writer's block happens is that you, you're overly judgmental. Like, I edit as I go because I hate the underlining red squiggle. It drives me nuts. I, I, I have. But that's not all that editing is. Oh, but I cannot stop correcting as I go, and it ruins the flow, and I can't stop myself because I hate it. I hate it. Okay, that's fine. I correct spelling and stuff as I go. I've as well. had to stop looking at my own writing. I but can't even do it. I'm saying like editing is like you go back and you. I don't like the way I worded this, or oh yeah, yeah, pack yeah. out a piece of the story. You're like this serves no purpose. But I've I've spent things like that three hours moving five paragraphs around. Cutting sentences, putting in the first paragraph, moving that back down three paragraphs down I, until I got the flow where I needed it to be. I'm a damn butcher. Uh, I can't do it. I can't look at my own stories. I will. I just murder them. Yeah, you but all I read was it. those five paragraphs. I've written five I paragraphs can't. in like 20 minutes and spent three hours trying to figure out what the point was. And I'll delete them. If you I read. Guys, okay, you two need to stop doing that and just swap the story and let each other look at it. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's crap, isn't it? Don't even tell me. It's just, just crap. And that's what I'm saying. Your best, your best option mood. is just keep writing. I'm just a fraud. Yes, just throw it you're out. Right, and that's the thing. Just keep writing. Keep going. Work through it. If you need to skip your, if you're seriously unmotivated, I'm gonna say like I would never force myself to write something that I don't feel good about. Oh, I've done it because plenty. Because that's going to come out as crap. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll skip ahead to the next thing I'm excited about. Because when I'm excited about something, that's right. when the best work comes out. Right. So I skip ahead and I write it and I'm excited. And then I'll go back and I'll be like, okay, now this is how this works together. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, sometimes I just feel like together. I would have one of those like boards with like all these little notes and yarn going everywhere. Like that meme, like, you know, like when you're ever explaining something. It's I think it's from The Office or something. I okay, well, watch here's it. where the outline <laughs> comes in is that I know how this piece is into uh, the next piece. I just need to get there. I already have so many 
notes, I look like a crazy person. I, I, I just, I, 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 I oh. Okay, well, it's not cast. for everybody. It probably depends. No, on I probably should. I probably should be doing these things. But I'm just, just afraid of what I, I would feel become. feel like if I'm not excited about what I'm writing, then what I'm writing is not going to It becomes a grocery writing. list. Yeah. It's going to be boring. It's Although going sometimes, to come through that way. Sometimes I'll actually end up doing <laughs> research or figuring things out like, okay, how would this lyric uh, look like or whatever, and I get some great world-building background. I don't know where it's going to plug in, but also, it could be generative. It just yeah. won't show in the no, actual. That, no, that's a great idea, and like that's something else is that sometimes it helps if you're if you're getting stuck at a certain place or you need to write about a certain character or something like that. Sometimes it'll help to stop. And flip the perspective. Go back and like write something from another character's point of view or to do some more character building on that side, even if that's never going into your story. Sometimes the problem is that that character doesn't have enough depth to you yes. in order to write that next section there of your There are story. no side characters. All right, so let's stop and flip the perspective. We'll be right back. Meanwhile, deep within the depths of Castle Numskull, our intrepid heroes explore the idea of being entertaining for once. Back to the action! Okay, so we're back and uh, got another beer, so this hopefully will help. Uh, but anyways, so you were talking about flipping it and trying it from a different character's point of perspective or point of view. And I kind of like that idea. In fact, uh, I may actually apply that because I'm having a little bit of a hard time with uh, one of my chapters. Uh, in the story I'm writing right now, mm -hmm. uh, and it's hard to stay disciplined when I'm becoming unmotivated because I'm having a hard time seeing the scene the way it's supposed to go, right? Uh, and I want to put as much time in writing. You know, I, I put at least, you know, part of an hour in each day trying to write or what have you. But you get to a certain point and you're like, this just doesn't feel like it's flowing right, mm -hmm. right? So that's not a bad idea. Is You know, like I've got two brothers and a few friends or whatever on this ship, and I could try and just simply go from a different character's point of view. Now, I realize if you're writing first person, it's probably difficult to do. But Not necessarily. In third I mean, person, I think it's easy enough to yeah. let's take a look from this guy's point of view. How does this all look? Maybe he's seeing his friend stress out or something like that. You right, know? and like I said, that doesn't even have to make it into your final story. But it could help you to develop the story if you're seeing what's happening from a different character's point of view. Sure. Even if it's the villain, you know? Um, but I mean, even if it's, you know, a meaningless character that you hadn't originally developed, watching everything from the outside, I mean, sometimes that'll kind of push your story along in a way that you hadn't expected or hadn't originally seen. Sure, yeah, yeah, offer a different view of everything, because you, when you really think about it, you don't necessarily see everything, right? Like, say, so, you know, I don't know, in your own life, you know. You're like, oh, I can't find my keys, and it's one of your kids that finds them, or something like that. Right. Sometimes you know? it's that outside There's something perspective, that, and they were right there all missed. along, right? You know, right. Like right on the, the arm of the couch, well, and that's there, not a bad thought. There's mm -hmm. a lot to be said about that. Um, like sometimes you you get burnt on a thing, or you're not having fun with it, and it's better just to do anything else. Now, where tear has the means or the mental energy to write an entirely different story, and that gets her out of red space. Sometimes just doing something else is fine. Uh, the problem is is having the discipline to set aside the time to write X amount of words or chapters or pages or whatever arbitrary number you want to put just so that you're committed to like two hours a day or whatever. I'm just so bad at that. It, me too. And that's, that's one the other thing I want to get to is just life, depression, any number of things that just pull you out of doing what you love. Because uh, self-defeating behaviors you might engage in uh, of a procrastination. Because it, it becomes a loop where, like, maybe you're watching TV as a distraction. And you're like, maybe I should write. And then you keep putting it off. And then you're feeling guilt about not writing. But then it, it becomes this thing where you have guilt about guilt. And it just becomes this whole, like, psych. Uh, cyclic thing and then you, you get down a rabbit hole instead yeah, of just you, doing it you make excuses you know I've, I've messed up all week I'll, I'll start Monday and then you just made it worse you know? right right so yeah I don't it's, think there's that. I mean I, I've heard authors say you know just commit an hour or something but do it every day I don't care if you're sick I don't care what it is you just commit and it doesn't matter if it's crap don't delete it just don't keep it as part oh, of your story put in another file I'm gonna delete that shit I was gonna say an hour seems excessive to me by all means, write every day. But to me, if you're having a crap day and you've literally got, like, depression and anxiety writing you, if you get a prompt or a chapter 
out of, you know, a few miserable moments of, well, I'm going to put this effort in, you know, then more power to you. Fuck, do it from bed, you know? You're trapped in your bed and you're not even feeling the will to get out and make dinner. Write something into your phone. I got to go to my office. But, and but just I need my it. space. But guys, Twitter needs me. <laughs> well, that's a thing. Well, okay. my point is, it's better than nothing, right? If you get an idea into your phone about what you, where you want your story to go, or an unexpected turn, or you know, anything, anything that could turn into something somewhere down the line, that's better than nothing. That's enough to forgive yourself for having a crappy day. Yeah, but uh, the other thing is, is like, okay, say you're at the computer and you got a bit of writer's block as far as like where to go with this chapter or whatever. You know, uh, you maybe ring yourself in a corner or you're not sure how some works and you go and do some research online. Now, I'm guilty of spending six hours on Wikipedia just reading the entire entry and sub-entries and trying to flush out and just learning all vast stuff that I'll never use. I mean, it's useful, don't get me wrong, but, you know, if you want to publish within a decade, it's... I hate when I'm looking up, like... It's as bad as going to a porn site, like, you know, I'll just spend 20 minutes, knock this out, and then I'll I'll, I'll be good at right as rain. I, was just saying, I, I hate when you start out and you're Four looking hours up later, quantum physics, and the next thing you know, you're on Pornhub. It's like, how did this happen? <laughs> how did this happen? What is wrong with me? I, I'm kind of curious of... Uh, <laughs> What entry that was? Quantum entanglement. I don't, I don't know. I don't know that quantum physics excites me quite that much. It was weird. Yeah. Like, like are, are they wearing lab coats in that uh, scenario? Or? She was like, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Oh. Anyways. <laughs> well, no. it, you are writing sci-fi, <laughs> no. so I, I guess it's I guess it's fair. <laughs> this just took a turn that I was not ready for. <laughs> no, but it's true. It's like you have the entire universe at your fingertips, and if you've got a question, you can just find out. But then, you're not writing anymore. And it's good to do research, but... It's absolutely yeah. good to do research. And we, I, eventually, that's all you're certainly doing. Certainly part of your story, <laughs> but you also need to know when enough is enough and just pick up the damn pen. I feel like I need a writing dominatrix. <laughs> right! Who's like, if you don't write, I'll slap the shit out of you. you but then you I'm like, do. yeah, like, slap I'm, me. Like, I know if oh, I was yeah. independently wealthy. <laughs> if I was wealthy... I, I would just That's go excellent. to my office like a job. I'd and spend yes. eight hours a day writing. <laughs> but yeah, you go to work, you have lives, Jesus. kids, pets, uh, hobbies. I mean, that's all true. But I also feel like, okay, you know what I think the best plan is? If you have a, a story, seriously, that you're serious about and that you want to get published within a certain time frame, okay? Set yourself a goal. Give yourself a reasonable amount of time. In six months or on this date. I think that's just be stressed and guilty about that. You're not going to hit that date. The point is, <laughs> set your date and say, I will be publishing this book on this date. All right? And then write your freaking heart out. And when that date comes and you've got a rough draft that still needs to be reviewed and edited and chopped up and redone... I mean, you're 400 steps ahead of where you would have been had you not set that goal. Like so you're basically saying, this. <clears throat> treat it huh? like a diet. You know you're probably never going to hit your target. You're going to fail, but... But at least give it the go. Listen. Uh, commit yourself. In and... general, creative types are not so completely rigid that they're going to hit an exact deadline on the exact date. So, I mean... God, give can you yourself... imagine being an editor? <laughs> uh, um, I hate editing, but you kind of got to do it. But it's got to be point, like herding cats. <laughs> yeah, right? But the point is that... <clears throat> but hold yourself accountable for that date, you know? Set your goal and freaking meet it. If you are serious, because that's why I feel like what a, a lot of people are serious about writing, and then they'll just never get published because they never, they never hold themselves accountable to hit that date. So many people are constantly writing. I don't know. It's so a passion, people. but it's also a hobby. It's like, I don't know. I, I just kind of <laughs> love the process, but yeah, I do need to crap or get off the pot. If uh, It's up to you. I mean, some people write for fun. The world needs to know what's in my head, though. Exactly. Should you actually want to publish, just force yourself to hit that date. I really want the uh, the dominatrix, actually. I, yeah, I, you I, like I, that? I maybe, I'll, maybe I'll start the service. I don't know. You, just comes over, like, a, like you know, once every eight yeah, hours. Yeah, you yeah, hire a writing dominatrix. We schedule a time, right? Maybe every four. And then they come over, and, yeah, if you don't, you know, write, 
they whoop your ass. So they just drive around from writer's house to writer's yeah, house. Yeah, that's all it is. Yell at you a little and then leave. Yeah. You are a scum. You are fake. You will never be published. Whoosh. Put on pants. <laughs> Put on pants. I mean, if people are I actually not that interested kind of in this, tricks. I will come to you and smack you around till you write. <laughs> 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 I could do that. <laughs> But I kind I of feel, would help. I kind of yeah. feel like you two might be on your own with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Just maybe. Hmm. Just saying, this could be a successful business. <laughs> if you out there in uh, that and listen to the show, you need a writing dominatrix. Let us know. <laughs> we'll actually vet this idea and, uh, and and see if it could go anywhere. Oh lord. So. All right. So, uh, how Speaking often? Speaking of discipline. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should get back on topic. How often? We had one. Do I should I write every day, every single day, That's seven days a week? Actually, what they recommend, yeah. In about an hour, at least. Yeah, I feel like an I'm hour rather is irregular. Lot. I mean, there's some days where I'll write for hours. Oh, and there's, there's some no days with that. where I'll write almost not at all, like a few minutes or whatever. You know. Now, I mean, almost every day I do put something on paper. It doesn't necessarily end up anywhere near the end product. I don't know. I, I do a lot of leg work but actual physical writing has been a while so yeah i can no i feel that. like i'm the same as loki it's some days i will be at my computer all freaking day yeah uh when the motivation there is there the motivation that's is there. the thing i just yeah the older then, i get the busier i get the less i can I, bring myself a lot of video games yeah. Yeah. actually i haven't <laughs> I, say, I haven't in two months prioritize yourself if you want to Right as a hobby, then that's you yeah. know well and good. Video but games, if you actually want to masturbation, oh, then for writing. God's sake. <laughs> it doesn't take up that much time, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, I'm <anyway>. efficient. <laughs> Who Sweet masturbates Jesus. a full minute a day? <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, what kind of books are you guys writing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love story, and you know you can make fun of video right. games or anything, but it's it's interactive story. Just same reason you love a movie or a book. Sure, and uh, you no, know I don't I mean, like mindless hack and slash. Great. That's boring. But do you want to share that story with people? Well, that's the thing is, is that like sometimes oh, I love with my sometimes when I get writer's video block, video. I'll find myself channel surfing. You know, just looking for inspiration, not to copy, but just to see, you know like get the juices going and I'd be stimulated by things, see other. Expressions of oh, similar I, tropes. I, yeah, I, I see. I can't. I can't uh, get into like I love sci-fi and stuff like that, but I can't watch things that are going to have anything, or even read things that have anything to do with the kind of universe I'm writing in, because uh, I, I specifically don't want to steal anything. Right. Like, right. No, I know that. So, yeah. so I purposely read horror and not sci-fi. You know, uh, and I, I, I do love sci-fi shows, but if I'm going to watch a sci-fi show. I don't write while I'm while I'm watching a sci-fi show, you know, and that's why I love Netflix because I can binge the whole fucking thing, and then wait a week before I start writing again, so I don't, you know. Mm -hmm. Right, but that, like, like I said, goes into that self-defeating uh, uh, thing where <clears throat> you end up doing all this to either get the juices going or to distract yourself, and after a while you start feeling guilt about not doing that, so you end up just doing more of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I guess. I watch it, a lot less TV these days, so I don't get quite so hooked into the I Netflix do, thing. There's so many services. I do have a little bit of a method that so I do many once shows. in a while. But then I end up breaking down, and it doesn't work every so often. Where what I'll do is, uh, you know, you get yourself a treat. Like, I'll have a, a chocolate bar, and uh, I'm allowed to have a piece of chocolate any day I was productive. A day I'm not productive, no chocolate. And then once in a while, break down, just eat the whole chocolate. Bar. <laughs> but but it's it works sometimes. It doesn't work all the time. Yeah. I did that with quitting smoking once. Chocolate? No, no. I allowed myself a cigarette after a chapter. Oh. Okay. Like a full long chapter, not one of those short ones. Uh huh. Hmm. Like two hours of work worth. Maybe that's a good way for me to quit smoking. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you have to complete it first. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I might go. Earn it. I might go an entire week without a cigarette. <laughs> then by then, I don't even want it. Right, right. So yeah, but then so you get through a chapter real quick. It's a one-page chapter. Screw it. <laughs> <laughs> I've earned it. To be like, what are you, Vonnegut? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like those rigid timelines, or not timelines, but you know, those rigid like I have to write for at least an hour every day. Like to me, that's 
restrictive. Well, it's hard when you have kids, when you have work, when you. I have think other the idea things. though is we have treat a it like to assemble exercise. It's like if you don't do it consistently, you're just not going to do it. There's okay, that's every horrible. year, every year people make New Year's resolutions. But I don't write, I'm going to die. And they join a gym, <laughs> and nowadays there's a lot of gyms they can join. Ten bucks a month, no commitment. It's great. But in the past, you had to sign like a year or two freaking contract. It was a lot of money. It goes on your credit card. And then you're like, you've got this huge subscription. You've gone, what, three times? I, yeah, that happens to so many people. It's more appetizing, though, because there's not some sweaty weirdo sitting next to me <laughs> on the machine. My point is, is that if you do not make a commitment, it's hard intermittently you know, to, to bring yourself to back, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you gotta no, build... No, you're not making any sense well, at the no, moment. The you gotta build healthy sense. habits. The problem is I hate the analogy. <laughs> because <laughs> I go to the gym and it sucks. And there's no point where right. I get that euphoric, oh, I enjoy, like, working out. No, I hate working out. But I go because I like tacos. Yeah. So... <laughs> I enjoy Tacos are amazing. No, I hate working out. But... I, I feel like my writing time is for me. Like, it's for my sanity. I need to to get the, the voices in my head out on paper. <laughs> All the people in my brain want to play. <laughs> right. Like, I need to... That's my me time. Like, there's a big difference between how I feel about going to the gym and how I feel about writing. I don't know. I, I just have so many diverse interests and questions and things that I... Uh, that I... my Writing is just one of many Maybe. distractions. And it's hard... To, to always prioritize it, especially with the amount of work and self-judgment that comes along with it. You know what I mean? Because okay, writing... Okay, so it, take the judgment out of it. Uh, yeah, give right. Yourself permission, <laughs> give yourself permission to write something that Honestly, doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you know Make what, it perfect your second you time. You know what did amazing? Um, years ago, I wrote in a bar. I had a nice, even, pretty heavy buzz. Uh, drinking does help me. And the thing is, it was a different form of writing, but it flew out of me fast, and it was distracting as hell. It was so... I hate background noise. I hate it so damn much. I don't understand these coffee shop people. I don't get it. You need earphones or something, because I, I cannot stand that level of distraction. Well, they want to be seen writing a screenplay. Oh, it, 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 <laughs> stu- ugh. It, <laughs> yeah. Like, if you've got kids or something, you need to escape, fine, whatever. But, I mean... I can understand wanting to escape your kids. I, I, well, I mean, because not everyone has a home environment that can handle. Like, I have distraction in my home, and I don't have all these issues. And that's why I listen to music or something. But uh, I, I cannot with that kind of background noise. And somehow I was able to channel it out. Once I... Like, I was fighting it for 20 minutes. It was annoying, and it was hard to focus. But once I got into the writing, that volume dropped down. It became background noise. It yeah, became yeah, yeah. Noise. You start to tune out the world when you're in the zone. Right, right. But that zone is hard to get into. What I'm saying is, is that like, well, I don't recommend alcoholism. I was saying is that judgment disappeared, and the writing wasn't bad. It was a little more vulgar. It was a lot less disciplined, but it wasn't bad. I do feel, like and there was a lot more of it. Well, okay. So I write very gritty, you know, violent ruffians. You know, I mean, they are, they are. Well, yeah, sure, sure. If your character's gritty, it's gritty. They're rogues, you know? Yeah. So I do write more roguishly when I've got a buzz going, you know? I'm not hammered. I, don't, I can't write at all when I'm hammered. I mean, it's just garbled well, crap on it. I mean, but, people misuse drunken terminology. I think hammered is hammered. I don't think yeah, you're doing much well, of anything. Yeah, my face is on the keyboard. It's mostly apologies <laughs> but, uh, at that point. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I love you. I Why is this long apology in your book? But <laughs> I, had a, I had a significant buzz. We love you, too. <laughs> yeah, you could definitely yeah. write in that state. Are you okay, Mr. Lafayarsen? There's um, yeah, a whole no. huge apology in chapter it? Who three. Was it? I it wouldn't was... post any of it. Was it Hemingway who said, write drunk, edit sober? Uh, I have a wow. writer. might be right, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That sounds right. Well, if he said it. Yeah. Now it's a tattoo. So, no, <laughs> I'm sure. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll have to try writing on absinthe and orange juice. I don't know. Isn't, isn't that what his drink was? What's it? Absinthe and orange juice. The, that, that could go way wrong. Oh, but, yeah. That doesn't but sound you'll be right minty. at all. But you will be minty. Minty orange. Ew. That sounds no. horrible. Have you, yeah, ever yeah, drink, have you ever drink orange juice after you brushed your teeth? Yeah, yeah. I don't really like it. <laughs> I don't <laughs> really like orange juice and liquor. Okay, I just got nauseous thinking about this. <laughs> like fuzzy navels? This is Ugh. terrible. Uh, tell us what your favorite drink to write to is. We'll be right back. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> 
In a topsy-turvy world, it's nice to have something that makes sense. This is a knit, but we hope you enjoy it anyways. All right, we're back, and I was asking the question, is Kansas a real place? Um, Actually, Earl Grey. Oh, Earl Grey. No, okay, the wrong show. All right. <laughs> so you're saying Earl Grey is the right thing to drink while well, right? For me. It right. makes me feel smart. But it's not. It's, it's totally a Dumbles feather, but, but I love it. But it it, it tastes good. It doesn't give you a buzz. Oh, or... no, 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 no. All right. But it, it gets me in the I'm writing now mood. That's true. And if I did tequila, my pants would be off. That's yeah, no, no, no. Nurse a beer. Do not go for... Sh yeah, 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 no. Fair enough, fair I, enough. I can't imagine writing with Jack. Right, I can't see that. Earl Grey it is. All right, so uh, do you think that, that that fear has anything to do with writer's block from time to time? Oh, like God, maybe, yes. Maybe, well, okay, in my case, sometimes my writing, I feel like, is so bad that that I don't think I should be a writer. Yeah, self-judgment is yeah, a big part. Yeah, it's just, and I think a lot of writers have that where they're not bad writers, really. It's just that you get inside your own head and you say shit like It's not but, a bad thing to be discriminatory, that, right? though. Sometimes I mean, you're afraid to go all the way. You know, you're afraid that you're going to be judged for a way things are. push boundaries yeah, and yeah, cross yeah. lines. And I feel like that's like our what? job, right? It is our job. It's our job to push those boundaries. It's our job to ask these questions. It's our job to to show to how awful this person and is. Or, it anyway. Yeah, are, are right. we talking about like Mark Twain and the uh, period of you know like the use of the N word in that story Not and that time period? Justin. What's our time period, right? I mean, in our time period. Uh, I've heard people criticized for writing an LGBT character when they're not LGBT, or writing a disabled character when they themselves aren't disabled. Sure. And I think that's just hokum, right? I mean, the idea that you're going to be criticized for writing a character that you are not... Well, will you, you know, write it as well as somebody are you writing the character who has I mean, sorry, that background? Probably no. not, but that Here's doesn't mean the, you couldn't do it well. These people exist in real life. If you're writing every character based on who you are, your book's going to be boring as hell. I agree. Well, sure, because these it's popular. In life, a whole world a book of people. is supposed to be a reflection of life, right? Right. right. You're supposed to be writing something that reflects a, a real world. If every single one of your characters is a white female or a white male or a Hispanic female, or like just because that's what you are, no. What well, the hell sense does that? Make? I did experience a bit of this early on <laughs> in writing, and that I've noticed that a lot of the characters that I fleshed the world out were some aspect of my personality or alter ego amplified. Well, you are Odin, and you do make up a lot of the personality sure, base I, of the yeah, world. Sure, like five hundred names. Sure, we put a little piece of ourselves in but, every one of our characters. Right, right, right. Sure, that's one way to identify and understand these characters. Yes. But after a certain point, you, they all start having the same voice. You know, I did voice. just think yes. about that. So That's you need to be empathetic. You, you need to thinking. understand other people to, you know, get beyond yourself and I, have a rounder world. I do write a lot of my main characters as tricksters. So it is interesting. I didn't really think about it before, eh, but so what? That's that's your voice. You that's know. fine. As long as not everybody in your world sounds like that. No, guy. no, no, no. Most of them are are, are vanillas, but. Um, you know, no, nah, that's fine. I mean, if if a reader likes the one book, Although maybe he likes the other. Enough, okay. I write a lot of aliens, right? And my aliens tend to be more straight laced than the humans. I'm not sure if that's something else going on. Anyways, straight laced. Yeah, you know, they're just a lot of them are very stiff and and uh, snooty or or very traditional in their ways. They're, a lot of them are very conservative and stuff like that. You know, and. It, and I'm, because it's their culture, you know, a lot of them uh, come from authoritarian planets and okay. stuff like that, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I didn't really think about it. I mean, I do have some for, that are very liberal alien races and stuff like that, too. But but a lot of my aliens are far more conservative than my I think that humans. it's crap for people to try to box in writing or art in any way. I agree, I agree. Don't yeah. tell me to not write about other races or other Oh, I was going to say, aren't we doing that by defining genders. things? No, I mean, the thing is that, that this is supposed to be something that, that is expressive. It's supposed to make you feel something. It's supposed to make you think. It's supposed to push boundaries. Right, right, it's right. It's supposed to show you other points of view. It's That's supposed how I feel. It's to like, make you uncomfortable at times. Well, how dare you tell me what I can and can't write? That's well, my right. thought. You think know, about it's it. Like, it's, it's all it, writable. Right. If you look at a dystopian story... Okay, it, it, yes, at its heart, is it entertainment? Yeah, but really, what is the writer saying? He's projecting fears about where we're going from the point of time sure, that he maybe. either grew up in or is in writing in. So, uh, it, it, it's a mirror on the world. Even if that mirror is distorted through the lens of that author, who might not even be a good person, 
Okay, maybe he doesn't have. Oh yeah, from a, a, a realistic portrayal of the world. One of my favorite authors, but it's still a mirror. Wasn't, wasn't a good person. I love H.P. Lovecraft. Oh god, and yeah. from what I understand, H.P. Lovecraft was not a good person. No, but, no. but I still love his works. You know what I'm saying? And, and I understand you can see and smell the xenophobia in it. And, and that's actually what makes the story great, and, even though it made him a horrible person. I am completely opposite of that. You know? Sure, sure. But, but his xenophobia, yeah, it did. It did elicit some great horror, right? Right. I mean, it did. It did bring out these images in his mind, and it's like you can almost see his mental illness building in the in his own stories. And it's fantastic for me, probably horrifying for him and, and people he knew. I was gonna say, if he existed today, they'd pull up some ten year old tweet, and he is her of your own. Well. And he he deserve it, mind you. Oh yeah, yeah. But, I'm sure. but the world would be poor for it. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know that it, that his career would have gone the direction it did. Oh, not was. at all. <laughs> but uh, you know, um, that is what it is, I suppose. Uh, anyways, so but yeah, I mean, I think authors overall should be less afraid to push those boundaries. They should. Right? I mean, and I, and I clarify... feel like the world is trying to make them more afraid to push those. Oh boundaries. God, yeah. yes, I agree. By all means, do your research. I mean, what was the... Uh... Give them, give that character the best point of view that you can. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Create their voice in the most authentic way that you can. Um, if you're writing about somebody who's um, disabled or LGBT, or by all means, get to know some other people. Get their opinions on your character. If you are writing about a Norse god, feel free to contact us. Right, We will exactly. give you some insight. Exactly. Um, so, I mean, yes, by all means... Try to to get the voice correct, but don't be afraid to write that character because it's something that you're not. That's crazy. That's well, it just comes out. It comes right? down to research. Right. I agree. I agree. People are no different than physics or a subject matter well, that you can Wikipedia. Yeah, just, you should be able to either interview someone or at least read up on them. Well, read just all the stupid stereotypes. People. I yes. mean, if you're writing somebody who's blatantly a stereotype, that's your own prejudice coming You know through. what, though? But th- there's going to be a few right. people that are that. And there, that's there, fair. There are stereotypes. Just don't make that the only character because that will look bad. <laughs> yes, I'm part Latino. Yes, I like spicy food. Shut up about it. You know, I mean, shit happens. Yes, people fall into freaking... I'm not, and I do love spicy food. Stereotypes. <laughs> my, my butt doesn't, but I love it. For the love so, of God. This so episode you've gotten, has taken so many you, wrong turns. You've got an all-cracker ass, but your mouth is... <laughs> okay, I, I, let's switch subjects, because I, I know where this is going from you. <laughs> I know the next sentence, so let's move on. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Wow. <laughs> anyway, so uh, back to originality. <laughs> I thought that was pretty original. <laughs> well, that was playing it safe, but oh, yeah. I'm sorry, playing it safe. But I, I but mean, you can't be original if you're playing it safe all the time, I feel. I mean, oh, yeah. only so many damn stereotypes, you know? And then that's... No, you're exactly right. And that's, that's and I think, part of the problem. They're almost all incorrect. But... Look, we're all a continuum. Is some going to land exactly in the realm of a stereotype? Probably. Somebody has to. Seven billion people. Yeah. Yeah, but, okay, but, but you just proved my point uh, in the other direction, That's right? the outlier. Is that all Latinos like spicy food? Yeah, but so do some white people. So do some black people. So, so do most people. people. Most people yeah. like spicy. Most people, yeah, sp- right? spicy, spicy food's great. Yeah. Right. All right. We're a good set. <laughs> There's a reason that we like spicy food. Right. So get over the damn stereotypes. A lot of people fall into that. <laughs> but you know? yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I might be wrong, but I think we've said everything on that. And Tyr brought up originality, which right. was one of the subjects that, while we haven't scripted much, we have a general outline. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, by the way, for this unscripted. <laughs> it's not this, completely. This, this gem. We discussed that we're delivering it. today. Okay. So, all right, all right. So, you said originality. Yeah, and I I think that what we're talking about here is, like we were talking about, like I'll sometimes watch TV uh, when I'm feeling uninspired. I won't write on that exact subject, but if I do, I can separate the material I've seen versus what I'm writing. But there is a fear that you might accidentally copy something, or you've already wrote, written some, and then you found out, like, damn near done with the book, 
And there's uh, like three other stories out there exactly like this. it. And you're like, Jesus, I didn't I, even see those things. I started writing a story that was writing a short story for the website that we're hoping to, to get up soon. Mm-hmm. And it was the the damn running man. And I'm like, <laughs> are you kidding me? And I, right. had to, I scrapped it. I started over. I mean, I'm still writing. It's based on, you know, the idea is it's a game show. But, um... But I, I, of course, changed the plot and everything like that. It's not the running man anymore. I mean, sometimes those kinds of things just kind of fall into place. And we were talking before about how when we did the randomizer that came up with our steampunk comedy that we thought was impossible to write. That was a re-roll. Well, no, no. 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 We We agreed to do three rolls. Oh, okay. The first two rolls were things that already existed. Right. Oh, yeah. We had immediately ran, like, one of the rolls was the um, female lead... Uh, it was always female. Afflicted. I don't know why. Yeah, aff- afflicted, and she was, I don't know, save the world or something. Post-apocalypse. Post-apocalyptic. And, like, immediately we're like, we can't write that yeah. without rewriting Resident Evil. All three of us were like, like Resident Evil. Every no change we it. made was just a different sequel. It was right. right. <laughs> it was all the Resident Evil. Exactly. <laughs> so that's the thing, is that sometimes it's really difficult to find originality within a certain framework, because there's no way to do it. Right. Um, <laughs> Honestly, unless there was a crazy outbreak of chicken pox, I don't see how that could have ever worked. Um, so, I mean, sometimes you really need to change something major with your story, I think, in order to to break free from that, you know, originality box, I guess. Um, and sometimes it's just a matter of coming up with, um, like, a gener- a an original idea to start your story you know sometimes right. that's the hardest part is coming up with your with with something that you feel hasn't been done yet right um yeah the thing is is that no matter what you do you may accidentally but no that's copy some that already exists and that the truth is is that it's like the simpsons there's 200 episodes or 20 seasons or whatever the hell it was and South Park made fun of the fact because it's impossible to come up with a. We did a randomizer that, and we were coming up with stuff that right, was already right. done. Right, so right, exactly. We with, were what, so, doing a spinner and rolling dice. Right, I created a spinner full of. With a really, lot of entries in it, mind you. Yes, a like lot 20, of entries. Like 20. All right. And so, I mean, when you think of the quantum math on that, the possibilities of. Uh, it, it, it's not out th- that out there, but it was like one in four hundred. Right? It was probably hundreds of thousands if you really think about. It, but it doesn't matter. Point being is, is that you can't help with seven billion people on the planet and this many years of written material that you're not going to step on someone else's toes oh, okay. on, on something that has been written. Let's be fair. Everybody loves Disney. Oh my God! But okay, all of the stuff that Dis- that made Disney famous is uh, Grimm's Fairy Tale. Yeah, it was all stuff that they got public domain. Right. So yeah, I mean, they're definitely all stories that were taken from. And there. then they went and, and but what did they do to different? Have the public domain. What did uh, they do different? Laws changed because so. if you've seen the Grimm's Fairy Tales, what they they're dark. Okay, so they, no one has a happy they, ending. They padded them. Yes, and that's what I'm, I'm sorry. Have you watched Disney movies? Yeah. They well, keep the, no, no, no. Yes, they they start right. dark. They start dark. The Hell, parents die always. Uh, Pinocchio's pretty messed up, actually. It, it, messed the actual up. original story is far worse. Cinderella was a freaking slave. Again, they all start horrible. They end on a good note. The actual no, fairy tales don't. end horribly. The Little oh, Mermaid hit okay. the whole freaking ocean and had to change uh, everything no, no, no. about but the herself. Original, Cinderella, the original Little Mermaid was much worse. Okay, Cinderella... Her stepsisters were actually shaving off their feet with a knife to fit in the slippers. That's disgusting. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff you miss out on the real tales. <laughs> but what I was trying to tell you is, yes, Disney had a, the right answer in that. It's except they did copy on purpose. I'm not suggesting you do that. Well, no, it's what legal I'm when suggest- they did it. What I'm suggest, yeah, I get it's legal. But my my point is, what I'm suggesting is, if you find yourself in that boat, just make sure you tell it better. You tell it in an original way. I guess. I mean, That's where originality comes in. So you're saying if somebody writes a story about a hundred adorable little puppies, you find some way to skin them and make them into a coat. No, you make them in, So if you write it, you make the... <laughs> well, if, it, if it, you're writing from Cruel de Vil, then, then you can make a play like Wicked. You, uh, you, just, you just flip the script. Or, or you make the puppies become a monster and eat Cruella. Okay, I see. So, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, there, there's options. You like have Puppy options. Voltron? Maybe. Oh, my God, Puppy Tron. <laughs> Holy crap, that's amazing. 
puppy Tron. I don't do enough drugs for this. I feel like you have too many puppies for this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Which once again. You? I don't know. There's so many. <laughs> yeah, no. I, <clears throat> try and be original. Don't start off with someone else's idea. Like you saw a movie like, oh, that was great. Let me do it slightly different. Don't start from there. Start with an idea that's cooking I in your head. I don't know too many of the authors that are worried about this. I don't think too many of these guys but, are... I mean, you do have an issue, and I've seen this a little bit lately, that there are, are, are people out there who are maliciously stealing other people's work. And that sucks. Those people are awful, and screw them, you know, for, for going out there and actually looking for work to steal. And, right. And I just yeah, that makes that's me nervous. The norm, that, that's but I gross. think that genuine writers are really trying to... I mean, they come up with something genuine on their own, and then they try to frame it from there. Yeah, but I feel like even your original idea that you're starting this story with, I mean, it needs to blossom from there, and you kind of want to try to think outside the box. And, like, that's the, what truly makes a great story, is saying, hey, that's a great way. I wouldn't have thought of to do it that way, you know? Right, right. So, I well, mean, Well, and yeah. that's what somebody was asking the one day, is, well, you know, what, what kind of got you started writing, right? And a few people were saying things like, you know, I saw a story, or I saw a movie, or something like that. And I thought, I could have done that better, you know? Mm. And I think that's fine, you know, as long as you're not writing the same story again. Right. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and write that story, but change it. You know, these are different characters. It's a different setting. But literally all stories boil down to a few different arcs, you know? That's the thing. There is uh, uh, Joseph Campbell, the one myth, the right. one story. I mean, right, really right. all you're doing is moving details. Right, The right. same beats are all there. It's still the three-act play or five-act or however you want to structure it, right, but it's all really the same thing. Pepper in your, your originality, change it up, change the world a little bit, change the characters a little bit, you have a new story. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be the same damn thing. If you can't think of a few characters, maybe you shouldn't be writing, you know. But, I don't know, that's just my thought on it. It's no, I just hate it when you guys keep boiling down every story to the same path. And well, I think you, you think guys, it takes a romance out of it? I know, I know. You so you guys did this in the first episode, and I hate it. because In it, essence, it's true, though. I mean... It, it is, in essence, true, I know, but I just, I, I hate it. I think it. it's beautiful. I, I think it says something about story itself, about the human well, the mind. Well, we have millions of stories out there, and really there's one. You know? No, it bugs me. <laughs> I mean, it's great that so many people have come up with so many different ways to tell the story. You know, I think it's fantastic. I think it it says something that that it says even more that that so many people can be original. Well, what is that story when you think about it? Uh, it's someone going into some place he's uncomfortable, overcoming a challenge, getting a great gift, bringing it back to humanity. It's a story of triumph. It's junior high. Listen, man, not all. Uh, stories not my are junior high. Triumph. Oh, okay. Me either. Mine was a Greek tragedy. A Greek tragedy. Maybe a comedy. But you know, if, if you weren't in my shoes, it was probably a comedy. Okay, Puberty so is always a there comedy. There you go. Romeo and Juliet. Not a triumph. Well, it's a triumph of love. That was a Tarantino play. Although, although it in, was, though in was truth, no it was stupid teenagers that were really horny. I mean, a, if you really boil it down, I mean, what were they, 14? If it, it, yes, maybe? they were like oh, 14 yeah. and it was a double suicide. Yeah, they, they, they were stupid. They were just stupid. That There's was horrible. There's no triumph. I mean, all the window dressing in the world in a beautiful Elizabethan language doesn't fix the fact. I love that Shakespeare. I don't care. Th these kids just need a medication I'm and therapy. I'm not saying I don't like Shakespeare. I'm just saying it doesn't follow. No, a lot of people freaking hate, like, Romeo and Juliet. They hate on they I don't hate, hate it. Shakespeare and everything like that. I but, love Shakespeare. I don't but it's care. dated. I mean, <laughs> the whole idea of, like... I, I love that campy, crappy writing from... Killing yourself over I your first like love is insane. So, Oh, no, I agree. As an it's adult, stupid. As an adult. As a 14-year-old, oh, yeah. I get it. Oh, yeah. I'll never find love again. You're 14. Shut up. You know? <laughs> well, well, no, but you you're, find but love that depth, time that depth of emotion like, while you're you know going through those hormones. See, right to the original, right? That right, was real. Right, Romeo and Juliet. But the guy's like, I'm going to kill myself, and somebody slaps the shit out of him. <laughs> right? I mean, wouldn't that be? Oh great? my god, <laughs> that's a great new story. There, you, you're welcome. Have it. Good night. <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening. Check us out on Twitter at the Dark Stormy K1 and visit our webpage, thedarkandstormynights.home.blog. Thank you.